Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Activists in UK protest Pakistani crackdown on the And Muhammad Yunus returns to Bangladesh and the government. And now for all the details, the member of the opposition. On Thursday, opposition lawmakers protesting the bill said the proposed legislation targets minorities and is unconstitutional, with many demanding either the will is withdrawn or sent to standing committee. Congress leader K.C. Venugopal termed the bill as draconian and said the bill would create religious divisions and hate. Opposing the bill, MP Asawuddin Oasi claimed that the bill violates the principles of Article 14, 15 and 25 of the Constitution. The bill is evidence of the fact that you are an enemy of the Muslims, he added. Our belief is that this bill is Article 14, 15 and 25 of the principles of the Constitution. This bill is a basic structure of the Constitution and especially the judicial independence और सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर्स का ही वायलेशन करता है। डिफेंडिंग द बिल यूनियन मिनिस्टर रिजिजु सेड द बिल डज नॉट इंटरफेयर इन फ्रीडम ऑफ एनी रिलिजियस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड एडेड दैट मुस्लिम्स आर बीइंग मिसलेड ड्यू टू पार्टिसन पॉलिटिक्स। फॉरगेट अबाउट टेकिंग्स एनीवन्स राइट्स। दिस बिल हैज बीन प्रोट्ट Rajiju, highlighting the complaints of land grabbing, added the amendment bill was necessary as the Vakf boat was captured by mafia. And raising the issue of Vayana during zero hour in the Lok Sabha, leader of opposition Congress party Rahul Gandhi on Thursday urged the centre to declare the Vayana landslides in India's Kerala as national disaster and enhance the compensation for the affected people. More than 250 people died and several are still missing after heavy rains triggered multiple landslides. Rescuers are searching for more bodies in the landslide hit district. Indian Army soldiers were seen using cannons to search for bodies trapped under the rubble. It was the worst disaster in the state since deadly floods in 2018. Nearly 1,600 people have been rescued from hillside villages and more than 8,000 people were being sheltered in camps. And more specific kind of a search will be carried out by our troops with assistance of SOG and the forest rangers. Uh, today for uh, searching or for the recovery operations, we are sending one army cadaver dog also to further assist our mission. Moving on, Baloch activists on Wednesday held a protest in London condemning Pakistani atrocities on peaceful protesters of Baloch Yagjati Committee in Balochistan. They said the time has come for international community to question Pakistan over the state-sponsored Baloch genocide. Members of the Baloch National Movement, a rights advocacy group on Wednesday, staged a protest in London condemning the atrocities inflicted by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan on the sidelines of the Baloch Raji Muchi or the Baloch National Gathering. Activist Fahim Baloch said that since the invasion of Balochistan, gross human rights violations have been going on. He said there is siege by the security forces in Balochistan's Gwadar, where the Baloch Yakjati Committee called for the National Gathering. He said while the people resisted the forces, many of the protesters have either been killed or have been forcibly abducted. He added, even basic amenities like water supply have been cut down to quell the protests. But still, the people of Balochistan, they resisted without their uh, fear of their firings, without the fear, uh, fear of killings. Uh, many people reached to Gawadar, and when they reached to Gawadar, again in Gawadar, no, there is a siege, uh, there is no internet facility, uh, there is no, even water is not allowed uh, to supply to the people. 
uh, the telephone connections, everything has been jammed. Peaceful protesters. So against that, uh, no, our all in Balochistan, not in Balochistan, all over the world, Baloch National Movement uh, is uh, doing protest to tell the world what is going on in Balochistan. And it is the time uh, for the international community to wake up and start the Baloch genocide. Baloch activists have long alleged that Pakistan repeatedly carries out so-called military operations and enforced disappearances to instill fear and exert control in the region. The victims mostly include political workers, journalists, human rights activists and students who raise their voices against injustice and demand self-determination. The UNICEF in its latest report on Wednesday announced that over 28,000 children in Afghanistan are suffering from malnutrition in the past seven months. The report highlights the urgent need for attention to child malnutrition in Afghanistan. The UN and other world bodies have underscored the need for international aid to tackle the crisis in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has been urged to halt US aid to Afghanistan, reports suggest after revelations that nearly $300 million in US aid might have ended up in the hands of the Taliban. Mohammad Yunus, Bangladesh's only Nobel laureate on Thursday, returned to Dhaka to assume the charge of military-backed interim government after weeks of tumultuous student protests forced PM Sheikh Hasina's ouster from office. Yunus, who was charged by the past government over corruption charges, is a harsh critic of Hasina and was recommended for the job by the protest leaders. Yunus was acquitted by a lower court in the corruption case on Wednesday and was scheduled to swear in as chief advisor along with a team of advisors later on Thursday in an interim government which the army chief said would include 15 members. Earlier this week, the army chief had said that the interim government will oversee the election for a new government. Notably, Hasina's Awami League party was not involved in an all-party discussions led by the army chief after Hasina fled to India. However, Hasina's son, Sajib Wazid, has said the party has not given up and was ready to hold talks with opponents and the administration. I had said my family will no longer be involved in politics, but in such situation where our grassroots workers and leaders are being attacked, we cannot let it go, he said in a Facebook post. He added, the Awami League is the biggest party of Bangladesh and without them, there cannot be any democratic government in the country. Awami League is the biggest party of the Bangladesh and the biggest party of Bangladesh. Awami League is not going to die. 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 আমরা বলেছিলাম যে আমার পরিবার আর রাজনীতি করবে না তবে আমাদের নেতা কর্মীর উপর যেভাবে হামলা হচ্ছে এই পরিস্থিতিতে আমরা হাল ছেড়ে দিতে পারি না বাংলাদেশে যদি গণতন্ত্র নতুন বাংলাদেশ গড়ে তুলতে হয় আওয়ামী লীগ ছাড়া সম্ভব না and a helicopter crashed in a forest outside Nepal's capital Kathmandu shortly after takeoff on Wednesday, killing all five people on board, the latest of more than a dozen air crashes in the mountainous region since the year 2000. The helicopter operated by Dynasty Air crashed in Shivapuri National Park of Nuwako District. A police spokesperson confirmed all four passengers were Chinese nationals, three men and one woman, while the pilot was a Nepali male. Local residents saw a fire emanating from the forest and alerted authorities. <laughs> Authorities said the helicopter en route to Rasuwa district from Kathmandu lost contact with air traffic control three minutes after takeoff. More than 360 people have died in plane or helicopter crashes in Nepal in the past 24 years. 
Moving on, Sri Lanka's president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, has said the benchmarks, revenue and expenditure figures agreed with the International Monetary Fund cannot be changed. Vikramasinghe made the remarks while responding to a media query about statements made by opposition leaders that they would renegotiate the terms of Sri Lanka's IMF deal if voted to power. He said, if we implement the agreement as we go along, there won't be a problem for Sri Lanka. Now others are coming up with various proposals that they want to change. Then they must tell what they are going to do. One thing about the IMF is that they have never changed benchmarks for any country, he added. Over the past two years, Vikramasinghe has overseen a fragile economic recovery after securing the $2.9 billion IMF bailout that has helped tame runaway inflation and rebuild dollar reserves. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.